Kell Brook says that he don't give a shit about Triple G Gennady Golovkin's power. <laughs> and uh, he says he fears no man. He is very confident that with this extra weight, him not having to boil himself down to 147, that he's going to be strong enough to get the job done against Triple G. I'm going to quote Kell Brook directly here. He was speaking to the Daily Mail. He says, I don't have to restrict myself to just eating X amount of calories all the time. It's just about eating clean, little and often, very often. I'm feeling very healthy because I don't need to diet hard to make welterweight. I'm making 160, not 147. It gets very bad making 147. If you look back at my previous fights, how lean I am on the scales, there's not an ounce on me. It's nice to put on those extra few, uh, it's nice to put those extra few pounds on. Usually the whole whole camp has to be watched and monitored because it's very difficult to make 147 there is no secret about that now i could probably have a few cakes if i wanted but really it's just rubbish carbs i want to be eating clean uh eating things that mend my body with nutritional value i've always wanted to be tested and that is what will happen in this fight it also shows that i don't give a shit i want to be Oh, sorry, I want to fight the best and I fear no man. This proves that. Those are the words of Kell Brook. Now, for a long time, people have been saying this about Kell Brook, particularly British boxing fans. They've been saying that Kell Brook is afraid of big challenges. But is this similar to Amir Khan? Because Khan was avoiding Brook, that's clear. But then he went and fought Canelo and got knocked out. Was it a risk reward or is this Brook situation with Golovkin a risk reward situation like Khan fighting Canelo was? We know Khan was avoiding Brook because if he was to fight Brook and lose, he loses a hell of a lot of credibility as a welterweight. But going up and fighting Canelo and losing, he don't fight, he don't lose as much credibility because that's a middleweight. So those people who have been criticizing Brook for being quote unquote afraid of taking on real challenges at welterweight, is this a situation the same with Brook as with Khan, where, okay, Brook is going up and fighting a beast in Triple G at middleweight, but if he loses, he don't particularly lose any credibility as a welterweight. I don't know. That's kind of a slightly off, you know, topics, digressing a bit there, but let me know what you think about that anyway. Personally, I like Kell Brook's enthusiasm, I like his confidence, you're supposed to be confident in situations like this, you're supposed to go in there believing in yourself and believing that you're going to win, and um, he has to see the extra weight as a good thing, you know, he has to just spin everything positively, if you're a fighter and you're thinking about everything negatively, then you're probably not going to perform very well, you're probably not going to give yourself the best chance, <coughs> excuse me, so you have to go in there with full self-belief. And that's what Kell Brook is seemingly going in there with. So we'll see how it plays out in the fight itself. There's a lot of talk about the weight. Some people think it's good that he's this big. Um, some people think it's bad. Personally, I think it's actually good. Now, that doesn't mean that Kell Brook's going to win. He might still get smashed to pieces. But... The fact that he's such a big man, and we can see that now, at 176 pounds, he's in shape, people. The fact that he's that naturally big, and he hasn't been pumping weights or anything like that, this is just him naturally filled out at his, you know, walking around weight. The fact that he's that big and, and, and in shape at that size, to me, it indicates how much of his you know, energy reserves must have been depleted getting down to 147. He must have been just a dead man walking at that weight. Now, some people left comments on previous videos and saying, and they were saying, oh, he didn't look like a dead man walking. He was able to beat this guy and beat that guy. What the hell has that got to do with anything? Maybe he's that good <coughs> because he was able to beat this guy and that guy when he was a dead man walking. At the end of the day, if you drain, like, for example, Tony Bellew. Now, Tony Bellew was pound for pound, you know, probably not as good a fighter as Kell Brook, although that's arguable uh, to some people, I guess. But Tony Bellew 
was draining himself down 25 pounds to get down to light heavyweight. Tony Belly was a 200 pound fighter when he was an amateur. He turned professional at light heavyweight, 25 pounds lighter. Now he was still able to beat people at light heavyweight. He was still able to beat Isaac Chalembo and get himself into the mandatory position to challenge for Adonis Stevenson's WBC light heavyweight title. He was able to do all that while he was basically a dead man walking. Okay, now Kel Brook, who's an even better fighter than Tony Bellew, pound for pound in my opinion, maybe he was able to do the same. Maybe he was that talented and, well, that big, that even as a dead man walking at 147, he was still able to win high-level fights. There is no question that Tony Bellew is much stronger at cruiserweight than he was at light heavyweight. He obviously hits harder. You know, he's obviously more energetic. You can't argue that. Tony Belly definitely is better at cruiserweight than he ever was at light heavyweight because he's not having to drain down, even though he did have, you know, fairly decent success. And again, Kell Brook is a better fighter than Tony Bellew. So his, his success, even though he was a dead man walking and very drained, is going to be better than what Tony Bellew had. And indeed it was. He won the IBF title by beating Sean Porter. But you look at a guy at 176, that is him at his natural, healthy walking around weight, getting down to 147, wow, he really was depleting his body, and uh, killing himself, to do that, so, we'll see what he's like at middleweight, will it be enough, you know, many people agree with me that, they think Kell Brook, may well be better, at uh, middleweight, you know, I can't say that he definitely will be, but I suspect that he, will be more energetic, at middleweight, than he was at welterweight, but, you know, many people agree with that. But at the same time, they say, look, he, even with extra energy or potentially extra speed, Kell Brook's still not going to beat Triple G Gennady Golovkin. Stylistically, he don't have it in him. He's not tall enough. He's not rangy enough. He don't hit hard enough. He's not defensively good enough. Golovkin's still going to beat him. That's the opinion of many people, that even with a, a bit of extra speed and strength, Kell Brook's still going to lose. And to be honest with you, that's probably my opinion too. <laughs> I think even with the extra speed and strength, he'll still lose. I think the size that he had, the size advantage he had over so many welterweights was, you know, one of the big things for him, one of the big keys to his success. Now that he's going up against a guy of a similar size to himself, maybe a bit bigger, maybe a bit sm bit smaller, who knows? We'll see on fight night. Uh, he won't have size advantage over over this particular opponent. Certainly not the kind of size advantage he had a world await, so we'll see how his skills hold up in this situation. Anyway, let me know how you feel about Kell Brook's comments and everything I talked about in this video. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.